Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, Block Files Basic Form Fields, I'm going to show you how to use form fields to fill in information that is variable during each job. These fields are best used within block files so that they can be reused over and over for each of your transcripts. In our previous block files videos, we created a folder for our block files, which I can find under Alt-E, and we also created several block files. In addition, we also created a dictionary entry to bring in each of these block files. What I'm going to do in this example is show you how to insert a basic form field and then fill it in. I'm going to modify my off the record block file and I'm going to modify it to put in a field for the time to be entered at which the discussion off the record began. Right now my text says only discussion off the record. I'm going to modify it to include a statement about what time this occurred. And where the time would be inserted, I am going to insert a blank field. This is going to be a single blank field for the time that I can fill in later. To insert a blank field, I'm going to press Ctrl A as an apple, and it brings up the Add Blank dialog window. Each of the settings in here controls how the blank field works. The field label setting is only to remind you what information should go in this field. You can put anything you'd like in here and it won't be visible once the field is filled in. The field label setting is typically used as a cue to remind you what information goes in this field. So I'm going to type in time. The field size setting allows you to set a specific character limit for the field. If you're making a blank field for your case numbers and your case numbers are always 10 digits, you can uncheck adjustable and set the field size to 10. However, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave adjustable checked. Variables will cover in a future video, but they allow you to fill multiple blank fields in the same document with the same information. Prompt for contents is used when you're using a variable, and if checked, it will prompt you to fill in each of the form fields that use a given variable, rather than filling them in automatically for you. If I check delete line if empty, the whole line that contains the blank field will be deleted if I don't fill it in. There are some times when you have a blank field that you don't need to fill in, if for example it's for a secondary phone number for a contact or something like that. There may be times where it is preferable for it to delete the line that it exists on if you don't fill in any information. For this blank field, I'm not going to check this box. By default, when filling in form fields while editing, after you finish putting contents into one form field, Eclipse will move on to the next form field. If you don't want that behavior to happen, you can check last field so that it will stop at the field you fill in and allow you to continue editing from that location. This behavior can be a personal preference, however there are some times when one behavior may be more desirable than others. In this case I'm going to go ahead and check last field so that it doesn't jump anywhere during my example to try to fill in another blank field. If capitalized contents is checked, anything that I fill in this blank field will become capitalized automatically no matter how I type it in. If right flush contents is checked, the information that I fill in the blank field will stack to the right of the field rather than to the left of the field. Use list file allows you to set a list from which this blank field can pull information. Common list files include days of the week, months of the year, and party designation like plaintiff defendant. Mathematical functions will be covered in a future video and can be used to perform some higher end functions. If change font is checked, when I press OK to submit the form field into the document, a change font window will come up asking me what font I want to set the contents of this form field. If I select change font and select a different font than I typically print in, whatever information I fill in this form field will take on that new font. There are specific times where this may be desirable, however most of the time you don't want a different font just for the contents of a form field. So I'm going to leave this unchecked, and when I press OK, Eclipse will insert a form field that will fit any size information and will not take me to the next form field in the document. I'll press OK and Eclipse will populate the form field. And you see that it has my cue reminder of time to indicate what information should go in this field. If I want to edit this field, if for instance I misspelled my cue or I set one of the settings wrong, I can right click directly on the form field and choose properties and change any of the options that I'd like to change and press OK. Now that I have the form field in this document, I'll show you how it works. I'm going to close out of this block file and start a real-time file. I'm going to start a real-time file with instant real-time. 
And once I'm connected, I can begin writing. And for me, my off the record include will be brought in by writing off off. So I'll write that now. And you see that it brought in my auto include for my discussion off the record. And now it has an option for me to fill in the time that this occurred. I'm going to keep writing a little bit just so that I can pull that file in again to show you how it works with last field checked. I'll hit off off again. And I have another discussion off the record. So what I'm going to do now is stop this translation. I'll go to production, stop translation and press OK, and I'm left in the file since I just did stop translation instead of close, and what I can do is begin filling in my form fields. Since these form fields are calling for the time, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my time codes. I'll go to Alt U, Document, Time Codes, and I'll set my time printing to every line. I'll press OK, and go to the Display tab, and turn on Left Margin so I can see my time codes. My time codes are set to have the current time of day, and so this will give me the time that I can use to fill in my blank field. I'll put my cursor at the very first stroke of my document, and I can press Control E to fill in a form field, or I can press Hyper Key E. And I've now been presented the box to fill in the form field. I'm going to fill this in with exactly the information that I want, exactly as I want it to appear. And I see that on the left, my time for this line was 11.35. So I'm going to type in 1135, and in this instance, I only need the hours and minutes, I don't need the seconds. So I'm going to press OK, and you see that my cursor is left immediately after the form field. That's because I had last field checked. If I didn't have last field checked, it would have immediately jumped me down to the second instance of the form field. And so what I can do with my cursor at the end of the first form field is I can just simply press Control E again to fill in the next form field. And so this off the record discussion happened at 1136. I can fill that in exactly as I wish it to appear. And if I do want the AM or PM, I can put that in. If I want AM and PM with a period, I can put AM and PM in with a period. And that's exactly how my form field will, fill, will come out. Since I set the character setting to adjustable, there's room for as many characters as I want to put in my time. I'm going to close out of this document and I'm going to return to my block file and open the off the record statement again and I'm going to right click on this field and choose properties and this time I'm going to uncheck last field and I'll press OK. I'll close out of this file I'll start a new real-time file and I'll begin writing and I'll put in my first off the record statement and I will continue writing and I'll write my off off stroke again and now I have a second off the record statement in this document and I'll show you how it works when you fill in form fields without last field checked. So I'm going to press shift alt T to stop my translation and I'm going to go to the top of the document again. I'll turn my time codes on once more so that I can get the information that I need to fill in the form field and if I press control E I'm taken to the first form field again, just as in the previous example. I'll fill in my time for this line, which was 1140. And when I press enter, I'm taken immediately to the next form field because I did not have last field checked. And this one actually occurred at 1140 as well, so I'll fill that in. And when I press OK now, I'm taken to the end of the document. Since both of these form fields did not have last field checked, Eclipse continued to scan for the next form field to fill in for me. It didn't find anyone, and so it took me to the end of the transcript, indicating that all form fields had been filled in. Some people choose to use last field with all of their form fields, and some people choose to use it with only some. It's a matter of personal preference, and it can be better to use in some instances than others. To quickly recap, you can insert a blank field in any document, but they typically go in your block files. I can go to Alt-E, go to Blocks, and open up my title page, and in any of these fields, I can put in a blank field so that I don't have to backspace and then retype my appearance information, my case number information, or maybe even my county information each time. If I work in multiple counties in the state of Florida, I can insert a form field here, 
and fill in the county that I'm working in for this particular job. Form fields can be used anywhere where you may have variable information. I may wish to replace my case number with a form field, and I can even replace my appearances with form fields as well. I can put one field per line and fill in the appropriate information. And in addition to that, in future videos, I'll show you how you can use a list file for law firms so that you don't have to fill in any of this information. Once you have a law firm saved, you'll be able to use them again and again in the future. Block files and blank fields can save you a tremendous amount of time. Use block files wherever you have a volume of text that is frequently repeated so that you don't have to write it all manually from your steno machine and use blank fields within those block files so that you can easily change information that is variable between jobs. This combination allows you to have ready-made text that is easy to change for any situation and gives you the opportunity to save a tremendous amount of time when editing. I hope that you'll give block files and blank fields a try. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll give block files with form fields a chance. And if you have any questions, Advantage Software does offer anytime support 24-7. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays, at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching our videos. If you enjoy them, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications by clicking on the bell icon so that you'll be notified immediately whenever we publish new content. Thanks so much, and have a great day!